What's up guys, welcome back to the Samba Career Mode for part number 14 here for the second night race of the season in Singapore. And as you can see right on the top of the right at the start of the screen, we have got a sponsor bonus of 750 resource points. So probably that must that have co must have coincided with the fact that Alfa Romeo have taken over this team or have have given them sponsorship in uh, real life. So I'm hoping that's gonna allow us to uh, help fully develop continue the development of the car it might mean that we're able to get a uh, little upgrade on this car prior to the uh, next race in Malaysia but as you can see I'm having a quick look into the what we could possibly potentially do and I'm thinking of actually getting another um, one of the uh, just the efficiency upgrades such that then everything only costs 700 but I'm also thinking about getting just another chassis weight rate reduction upgrade such that we can then branch out into three potential um, upgrades a bit later on into the season either at the end of the season or next season so without further ado though we need to get some more resource points into the uh, bank so let's get into that with practice welcome and good evening race fans the clock is ticking down to the start of today's practice session here at the marina bay street circuit the setting for this weekend's singapore grand prix a lot of focus is naturally on the drivers but it's really important for the mechanics to get everything right as well, as one little mistake could cost the team and one of their drivers the race result. These guys are so meticulous and they train and perfect everything that they do. Without question, they feel the pressure in the same way as the drivers and they share the responsibility to ensure that the car makes it to the end of the race. All right, here we are in practice one around the Marina Bay street circuit for the track climate sensation, as you can see, based off the weather, it's all right, but it's obviously uh, not uh, in complete darkness as as it will be in the actual race itself, because the practice session is done a little bit earlier on in the day, and the uh, the darkness hasn't completely uh, c come around this particular circuit at this at this moment in the time. Anyways, we're in the track climatization to start with, as always. It's mainly, and we've managed to get the uh, maximum number of resource points available for this particular circuit. It's quite a tricky circuit overall in terms of. Uh, Lots of 90 degree corners, you've got to make sure you get absolutely every single one of those spot on to ensure that you uh, get those uh, gates correct. But anyways, we then moved on into the tire wear test as part of practice one still. And I thought, let's get this uh, one out of the way as well. We managed to get the uh, maximum number of resource points available for that, getting the optimal uh, tire wear, which is uh, absolutely fantastic. We then moved on into the race strategy. As you can see, based off the engine uh, map, it's quite an old set of uh, components we've got currently in car but that's mainly just because we want to try and run these as much as we can and uh, prevent us from uh, running out of uh, engine components prior to the uh, towards the end of the season but we're probably going to have to take another set of penalties at some point down the line because our uh, liability isn't optimal just yet that's something we need definitely need to work on as we uh, go through this particular season also hopefully uh, next season but anyways as you can see already on to lap four we're able to get the uh, Maximum number of resource points available. We're just doing the extra couple laps just to make sure we have a little bit more of an idea as to how the tyre wear will be. Depends on where we're going to be qualifying in regards to what sort of strategy we will, in, in, uh, we will end up uh, using. But anyways, then then on to practice soon. As you can see, the uh, weather has taken a bit of a turn for the worse, just like it did in real life where we had that crazy start with uh, when both Ferraris were taken out of the first corner by Vettel veering into Verstappen. But uh, yeah, this is, we're on to the fuel-saving part of the... Uh, practice uh, programs and I thought that's a, a suitable point to do it because it's in the wet uh, we'll be able to do a little bit more um, lifting and coasting around this particular circle. anyways we're now coming through the uh, last couple of corners we just about slow up enough so that we can uh, haven't had enough time in hand and therefore we're able to get the uh, optimal fuel usage out of that but anyways then it, on into a practice three as you can see the weather's changed again and also we're back to uh, a bit more of a lighter uh, sort of uh, light, light, more light is available. But anyways, we're into the qualifying program on the uh, ultra soft tyres. It's the softest compound tyre available for this particular race. Anyways, coming through the, uh, the last couple of calls, we're able to actually get the uh, the purple achieved uh, lap time prior to or after only just one lap, which is absolutely fantastic. Which meant we've got five out of five of those out of the uh, practice sections, which was absolutely fantastic. Which gave us another much enough resource points to actually make an up oh, a purchase an upgrade which is going to be another chassis weight reduction upgrade and it will also mean it will expand out into the weight redistribution and also the tire wear upgrade so the my thinking around this is to try and get this upgrade on the car ready for the next race but then we'll then save 
a lot of resource points up such that we can get one upgrade in each of the sort of areas inside the chassis. So one weight distribution, one uh, weight uh, reduction in weight reduction one, and then one tire wear one. Hopefully towards the uh, end of the season or during the close season such that we'll have those upgrades in for the start of next season. But anyways, that's enough for me talking about what happened in practice. Let's get into qualifying. The sky is dark and the lights are on. Welcome to qualifying here at the Marina Bay Street Circuit in Singapore. Looking at this field today, Ant, do you think we're going to see anyone take a chance, maybe run the harder of the available compounds and save some of the grippy tyres for the race tomorrow? Well, I'd be surprised in all honesty. It's only the front runners that really have the pace to get away with that. And even then, at the end of the day, it's a big risk. Track position is the most important thing, and it's rarely worth sacrificing for a slightly more optimal strategy in the race, so I doubt we're going to see anyone trying it. I have been wrong before, though. We certainly do see some risky decisions every now and then, and it's a gamble that's sometimes worth taking. But if it were me in the car, I would want to be on the fastest tyre for my qualifying lap, without a doubt. All right, here we are for the start of Q1 with our opening lap around the uh, Marina Bay Street Circuit. And as always, this first lap is mainly just to try and get a lap time on the board such that we then have a, uh, a delta such that we can then uh, improve the lap time. So we're now going to cut on to that second lap. As you can see, that delta has now appeared on the uh, top right hand corner. For those of you who don't know what that is. Anyways, let's get into it. Uh, as you can see, we actually are improving on our overall lap time. And at the moment, we're currently sat in P9 and behind our teammate Pascal Verlaine. That becomes P10 prior to the uh, end of, of our second lap. As you can see, we do move up into eighth place. Only temporarily, though, because several other drivers have yet to post their lap times. And as you can see, now onto our third lap a little bit later on into the session. And we are currently sitting in 15th place. I'm hoping to try and get as much time as we possibly can here because it could be pretty tight between ourselves and the rest of the guys that could potentially miss out in the, uh, the first part of qualifying. But anyways, we're coming through the uh, final couple of corners and we do move up one position into 14th place, which is uh, fantastic. And it's a position we actually held for the rest of the session, so it means we do get into the uh, second part of qualifying. I was quite skeptical as to whether we would be competitive enough to actually get into the uh, second part of qualifying, but we were able to do so, which is absolutely fantastic, at the expense of the of Lance Stroll. Carlos Sainz is quite a surprise, considering how well he did at this Grand Prix in real life. Uh, Jody and Palmer, again, having another disappointing um, qualifying session, and then Vail on our teammate ahead of Stoffel Van Dorn, which is absolutely uh, fantastic. So now going into... Q2. Now this first lap is always again using a uh, used set of tyres that actually the last set of tyres that we used on that final lap in Q1 as the the banker lap uh, time for this. As you can see, we can make a complete mess of that corner at towards the end of the first sector and understeering a little bit wide. So unfortunately, it's not going to be the quickest lap time that we're going to get on the board. So we're uh, really only going to limit ourselves to just two time runs. As you can see, we're currently on our second run right now. Currently sat in p10 so we have an opportunity to actually get into the final part of qualifying which would be insane if we're able to do so around this particular circuit so it's a come across the line now we drop to p11 back up to p10 for now let's see uh, uh, uh let's see the standings and see where we are unfortunately though that we end up uh, down in 13th place which is a bit of a shame one of those things really i didn't really expect us to be that far up the grid to be honest we actually out qualified both fiat and also alonso despite the fact alonso was able to be faster than us in the uh, first session so it must have been the fact that we may be able to find a little bit more time overall but this is, is now onto the uh, the engine um engine uh, screen but power, power unit screen and actually what i decided to do is i'm going to decide to take a sixth component six components for uh this particular grand prix actually but then i'll switch back to the uh, components i currently have in but i'm going to take some penalties right about now but mainly because i don't really expect myself to uh be competitive and be able to challenge for the, the points positions. We'll have to wait and see on that front. You never know what might happen in the race. But let's just take these penalties on the chin right now. And it means that we won't have to take those penalties a bit later on down the line. And whilst everyone uh, else will start taking those penalties. So uh, fingers crossed we don't uh, lose. Oh, we, don't, we end up, we'll probably end up at the back of the grid. But that's one of those things, really one of those things. Let's see what happens though in the race. A lot of a lot can definitely happen in this particular Grand Prix. So without further ado, let's get into it. Anthony Davidson is alongside me in the commentary box this evening. And big race this one, a real test of endurance. Sounds right up your alley. Wouldn't you just love to be down there on the grid right now? You know what, Crofty? I'm pretty happy to be up here in my air conditioning, thank you, right now. 
I can't stress just how difficult these conditions can be, especially when you consider it's the longest race on the calendar in terms of time. It's also one of those races where you have to remember to keep drinking, or there's a real risk of dehydration. Just like we saw with young Kevin Magnuson a couple of years ago, don't forget. We mentioned the bumps as well. Take a look at the onboards if you get a chance during this race. The movement in the suspension and the chassis is just incredible, and it's lots of hard work to wrestle the car around the lap here. Well then, after an exciting qualifying session yesterday, let's take a look at how the cars line up. Lewis Hamilton lines up on pole position, and starting alongside in P2 is Sebastian Vettel. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Bottas, Raikkonen, Daniel Ricciardo, and Verstappen, Perez, Ocon, Hulkenberg, and Kevin Magnussen, Kvyat, Alonso, Lance Stroll, and Sainz, Palmer, Verlein, Stoffel van Dorn, and Roman Grosjean. A Sauber and Felipe Massa completes the grid. And now it's time to head down to the track. Okay, here we go. I know what you can do. Don't let me down. Thanks, Jeff. And as you saw on the grid, it's not just me that was actually taking a couple of uh, uh, grid penalties. Uh, Felipe Massa is now alongside me on the back road of the grid. If now have a look at the race strategy for today. Decided to go in for the uh, high. T oh. The uh, high tire management strategy, but switching the both um, stints around because I can't. Again, I want to be a little bit faster towards the end of the race rather than a, than at the start, and then having to defend like crazy at the end of the race for a uh, several a good number of laps. So I'd rather be uh, the one that's chasing down drivers and being able to overtake them in the uh, towards the end of the race, and potentially we can get up into the late or uh, li last bits of the uh, reaches of the points. But we'll have to wait and see on that front. So we now go on to the formation lap. Objective here is to try and stay out of trouble because obviously we're, we're starting from the back. We really just want to avoid any sort of shenanigans into Turn 1. Depends on how, how good a start we get and what happens in Turn 1 though. But as we, as we saw in real life, a lot of crazy things can happen into this uh, first corner. Anyway, so let's get on into the race right about now. Let's see if we can get off to a good start. Lights out and away we go. It's an okay-ish start off the line, but it looks like we're going to get Van Dorn and we're forced to the right hand side due to the slow starting Van Dorn right in front of us there. But then we've hit, had some contact with Grosjean off the uh, off the end exit of turn one. It looks like we've had some front wing damage based off what the engineer is telling me. But the MFD isn't really telling me any information that there is any indication there is any damage. But anyways, we're now going to try and carry on, see if we can try and uh, get a little bit of revenge on Grosjean. But go up the inside of him into turn three, forcing him out wide and moving up into 17th place. And as you can see again, on that MFD, no real indication that there's damage on the car, but I do start to feel that there is a little bit of damage due to the uh, loss in sort of performance around these circles. So we go on board with a replay. Grosjean is going side by side with Verline, but I think he veers into me due to the fact that Alonso breaks quite heavily in front of him as well. So it was a little bit of a Constantina effect, and Grosjean didn't really notice me on the, the right, uh, going down the outside there. So it's a little bit unfortunate. Anyways, now onto lap two. Nothing really happened, changing too much in terms of position, but we're really now challenging, or trying to challenge Fernando Alonso as we are now onto lap three with the DRS in operation. I think we may have an opportunity to go for a late maneuver up the inside into turn four at the end of the DRS zone. At the end of sector one, we managed to make the maneuver stick. So the front wing damage isn't affecting us too much at the moment, but uh, I'm, ex I'm expecting it to affect us as we try and continue to push the car. And as the tyres get a little bit worn, as we now come on to the end of lap number four, we're trying to stick with the uh, likes of Jolie and Palmer. I think also our teammate Verlan managed to get in front of Palmer, which is the reason why he's not uh, pulling away from us, which is uh, fantastic. And it means that we're going to be back. We're really in the uh, in play here when it comes to these guys a bit later on into the race. So we now come on to uh, now lap six. We really we're just trying to follow these guys as best we can. But we've got a uh, yellow flag in play. That's the re reason for that is that Sergio Perez is out of the Grand Prix and that means we're going to get a free position as we can see the Force India parked up on the right hand side just to be at end sector two. Have a look at the replay to see what happened to the Force India. As we come through the, the Hepin left-hander, the Force India's Mercedes engine has let go down the straight and unfortunately for Checo, he is out and that was probably a big opportunity for him to actually score some more valuable championship points. He's had a very good season in this particular uh, save in this particular season in my in my case but anyways we're now on to lap seven as you can see 
Rojon has now got past Alonso. He's now trying to challenge us up in the DRS, uh, on the DRS straight. We're able to hold it down. We have the inside line down for the corner, but he's still there on the, ready to try and take the inside line for the next corner. We were able to hang it around the outside. I think there was a little bit of contact between us, us because um, our driver threw his hand up at, uh, during that straight prior to the, uh, the, net, the right hander. But anyways, we're now on to um, lap nine. We actually had Vettel behind us mainly because he's got he's had because he's had his first pitch already. But a little mistake for us from that corner has allowed Vettel to draw alongside us, and he might be able to make the move on us. But we do have the inside line to, to the corner prior to the DRS straight. We should have DRS in operation as Verline continues to hold up Palmer in front of us, which has been fantastic on his end. But as you can see, Vettel's now going to try and go round the outside of us. We've got the inside line, just like we did with Grosjean. But unlike Grosjean, Vettel's got a lot more alongside us as we now head into the right-hander. But there's a little bit of contact, unfortunately, and Vettel has lost a bit of time and also, I think, lost the position to Ricardo. As you can see, Ricardo is now in the next car behind us. We go up for a replay to see what actually happened. Vettel, we made a little bit of contact with the Ferrari. And there is the major contact which caused him to nearly spin into the wall. But uh, thankfully, for, thankfully uh, both drivers were able to continue. We're now on to lap 10. Verlon has actually made a pit stop. We've actually got some work from the engineer. So it looks like we may run into some gearbox issues towards the end of the race. But thankfully, though, this gearbox only has to do this race before it can be changed for absolutely free. It's already done five Grand Prix already, so I'm happy to report that we will actually will have a, a fresh gearbox for Malaysia as we now go on board to a different angle. As you can see, we've got side-by-side -side action here. Vettel trying to overtake two cars in the DRS and we're going to try and force him off the track a little bit, but he's still there on the inside. On the inside. And this time around, he's managed to get enough of a car's width up the inside. He's managed to try and take position. We're going to try and take the inside line for the next corner, though, because it's... Uh, uh, the inside line was, was the left next was a left hander. As we now go side by side, as it up towards the what used to be the hop, skip, and a jump section of the circuit when the uh, when the circuit was initially formed, there was a really uh, tricky uh, section of uh, chicane bits. But anyways, Vettel was able to uh, make the maneuver stick, and unfortunately for us, he's now going to go off into the distance. We're now on to lap 12. We're, it's, uh, we're now up to somehow P5, mainly because of the fact that more drivers are coming to the pits. As Ricardo goes up the inside of us into turn four, much cleaner maneuver than what uh, Vettel was able to do. I kind of left the door open for the Red Bull. But the other Red Bull, Verstappen tries to uh, be a little bit cheeky, go up the inside into the next corner, but I'm having none of that, mainly because of the fact I didn't expect Verstappen to go for a maneuver like that. I should have really known better considering uh, how aggressive Verstappen is overall in terms of his uh, overtaking. But yeah, anyways, we're now on to, uh, or still on to lap 12, and uh, Ricardo's managed to get further in front of us. But Kimi Raikkonen, is out of the Grand Prix, so that's more bad news for the championship leader. He may be blowing his already his massive championship lead that he had prior to the uh, halfway point of the season. He looked like he was back on track after winning in Monza, but another sort of mechanical failure for the Ferrari and the Finn has resulted in him retiring from the race. And that's going to be a big opportunity for the likes of Vettel and also potentially Lewis Hamilton to get back into this championship fight. He could the championship is not over yet in terms of the the front runners now. Go back on board, lap one to lap 13. We make a big, big, big of a mistake into uh, the corner, and that allows Verstappen to get through. And also, Bottas is trying to uh, have a piece of the action and try and overtake us as well, forcing his way up the inside into uh, turn seven or turn eight, one of the two. Anyways, we make a little bit of contact with the wall. Thankfully, though, no extra front wing damage has been caused as a result of that. We're starting to struggle with these tyres, and especially with the uh, front wing damage as well. We've now got uh, Hulkenberg looking... Uh, very um, optimistic or looking to try and overtake us here as we now try and make make another mistake into the uh, the hairpin left and that's going to let Hulkenberg go past us and now we've, we've dropped three positions in the space of say four five six corners which is a bit of a frustration but I was just trying my best to hold them up as best I can I knew I wasn't going to be able to finish in front of them at the end of the race but anyways we're now on to lap 15 and now Magnussen is now is the next car to try and uh, Overtake us uh, down the inside. We give him a little bit of space, but this time around we've got the inside line for the uh, right hander, which means, and we deliberately go deep into that corner to ensure that the Dane has no chance of overtaking us right there. But there's going to be a little bit more uh, argy body between us as we now go into one lap later, heading up towards the old pop skip of the jump place near where the famous hotel is. Going into the corner, we get a little bit of a tap from Magnussen right about here, and he's pushed us off the track, and that allows Magnussen to go through, and also the Esteban Ocon in the uh, the only four Indy that's remaining in the race right now. I was really annoyed with this when this actually happened. I'm really surprised Max didn't even get a penalty out of this. 
anyways, we've also got Vettel again behind us. He's already made a second pit stop. He's going to have to deal with us once again. Let's go on board with the reefer. See actually what happened with Magnussen. It looks like he had a much better drive out the corner. Trying to be ambitious, trying to go up the inside into the corner. I was having none of it. There's the initial contact. And there was a secondary bit of contact, which then forces us off the circuit. He doesn't even break whatsoever. And that pushes us off the circuit. I was generally really annoyed with that. I'm Hulkenberg was right about Magnussen in real life, considering uh, what happened in Hungary, but uh, I'm pretty sure Magnussen would tell me to suck a certain thing if I try to, uh, com com try to contest that. But anyways, we've now got Vettel overtaking us a lot easier, much, much more easily compared to uh, what happened previously as we try, try and go up the inside again into the corner. But we make, again, a little bit of a clumsy maneuver on him, trying to force him off the track. But again, Vettel's going to have the much better momentum in, and the inside line for uh, turn five. That's Alonso that somehow managed to fight his way back into uh, contention with us. As you can see, the tire wear is really now starting to uh, be a bit of a problem as we have got more news from the, the engineer. Cheers to that engineer. So not only do we have to deal with uh, these tires pretty much going off the cliff and also the fact that we've got uh, front wing damage, but we've also got to deal with the fact that our engine is now not going to be at optimal performance as well as the fact that uh, the gearbox is also potentially could give out at any sort of moments. We now come into the pits right right now. As you can see, loads of drivers overtaking us from that. I'm hoping some of those guys come into the pits, otherwise we're going to be... The strategy here hasn't really worked out just yet. I thought I was being a little bit ambitious with this uh, one-stop strategy, but I thought because of the fact that we're not the quickest car on the grid, we really need to try and uh, limit the amount of pit stops that are in there. But, of course, having a front wing change is also not going to... Uh, help us a lot either as we now exit the pits right about now we have rejoined as the last runner but we do have those also soft tires on so we're hoping we can uh, use those to full effect for the last 11 to 12 laps to see if we can uh, try and move up the grid we may not necessarily get points because of the fact that uh, our pace hasn't been very good due to the fact that our uh, the of the uh, due to the front wing damage that we had to deal with during the first stint. maybe i had to come into the pits a little bit earlier and then switch strategy around Perhaps go on to the, uh, the yellow wall soft tyres. So then we're now coming to the end of lap 19, our first lap on those uh, all soft tyres. We have got some drivers in the pits though, so we did gain a couple of positions. I think that was Van Dorn and also our teammate Vale, and also rejoining in front of us is Jolie and Palmer. So uh, you may have an opportunity to uh, have a little uh, go at the uh, fellow Brit because he is has rejoined on the super soft tyres. Bit strange that he was on the super soft tyres right there. You never know. I think he could have even got to the end on those. Um, on ultra soft anyways we're now on to lap 24 into the drs zone of the renault it took us quite a few laps to try and of following him to try and get into the uh, drs detection zone. we're going to go for a late maneuver like a dan and ricardo-esque maneuver and we we're able to make the maneuver stick on palmer and move up a one position we've actually done a proper overtake for the first time in a good while but anyways we're now on to towards the end of lap 24 we now have some sort of gearbox issues unfortunately though because as you can see Right there on the right-hand side, we ended up going from second gear to fourth gear. So we've lost third gear, unfortunately, which is a bit of a frustration, which means we're not, probably not going to be able to challenge the points position, but we're going to have some more news from the engineer about this gearbox. All right, thanks for the pep talk, engineer. That was really beneficial, actually, because I think that was the same uh, pep talk he kind of gave us in Bahrain when we had similar sort of issues. But the interesting thing, though, is that on lap 25, the third gear has come back. So it uh, seems like the uh, the mechanics or the engineers have somehow managed to get a quick fix and either done a control alt delete or something with the uh, gearbox. We're back to uh, full racing speed now. As we're now on to uh, lap 29. It was really a couple of laps trying to get as a faster lap as possible. As you can see, We've managed to reel in the Red Bull of Daniel Ricciardo. So a potential opportunity to get a little bit of revenge after what happened in uh, a bit later, earlier on in this Grand Prix. And also revenge it for Baku, which was uh, a bit of a, uh, a bummer when we weren't able to score point up that final point. Anyways, we're going to go up the inside during Ricciardo S maneuver on Ricciardo himself. So uh, that was uh, quite sweet to do that. But the main thing is, though, is to try and hold on to this position as best we can, because of course, these tyres, I think, oh, we have a little bit slightly more worn tyres compared to Daniel, but uh, we'll have to wait and see on that front. Hamilton has already won the Grand Prix, as you saw from the fireworks. But anyways, Ricardo's now looking to try and to take that position back from us. It looks like we're not going to be able to uh, score points, but this is a battle for pride here. 
as we now break deliberately late into the corner to ensure that we uh, maintain position. We managed to take that position right back from Ricardo and get that little bit of revenge on uh, the Australians. We now come across the line in 11th place. have pulled off a great victory here today and here are our podium drivers today after that excellent race they've excelled here as they so often do and it's a well-deserved victory mercedes then are on top today So then, it's time to see how this result affects the Drivers' Championship. Well, the lead at the top has come down after a poor result for our points leader. Now then, Anthony Davidson, who was your driver of the day? Felipe Massa. For me, that was an outstanding performance that drew on every bit of his not unsubstantial experience. And now, let's take a look at the Constructors' standings. We saw a dip in form from the Championship leaders today. Their lead has taken a significant blow. Meanwhile, Renault move up the table with another strong performance this weekend. That's it for today's Grand Prix, and from Ant and I, it's goodbye, and see you again next time. So confirmation of the results, Lewis Hamilton wins in uh, Singapore. I think it's his first win of the year, and Mercedes' his first win for about 10 rounds or something like that. So it's a massive result because it's a 1-2 as well with Bottas in second, Vettel in third, Verstappen fourth, Hulkenberg an impressive fifth, Magnussen in sixth, Massa starting last and finishing seventh. That's a pretty good result. I didn't see him at all throughout that Grand Prix, despite the fact that we were in front of him at the start. Grosjean on eighth, so that was a good double point score for Haas. That might be a little bit bad for us in terms of the championship perspective. And then Ocon in ninth with Carlos Sainz picking up the final points in tenth place. We are going to have a quick look at the Drivers' Championship. No real changes in terms of positions for us, but Lewis Hamilton's moved up into third, whilst Raikkonen's gap has been reduced to 36 points. So, uh... Vettel is really, the championship fight is getting really interesting right now. I think Hamilton still, technically Vettel and Hamilton are still in this. And there's still a good, a lot, we've still got a quarter of the season remaining left. As Holgerberg also moves up into eight, thanks to his pretty impressive result. As we now cut to the Constructors' Championship, as you as I was feared, Haas have now gone back in front of us due to their double points finish. And we are down to six. And also the fact that... Um, or Renault have scored well, scored well has meant that they've moved up in from, up into eighth ahead of Williams, despite them also scoring as well. But uh, yeah, that's one. Of the, that's really one of those things. Could it get? It might get a little bit tight in that battle for fifth. But uh, we have to wait and see. We'll just have to uh, see if we're going to bounce back in uh, Malaysia or in any future Grand Prix because uh, it may be tricky to keep to try and uh, keep up with Haas if they continue their uh, recent uh, good run of form in the second half of the year. Anyways, the main thing reason we need to main thing we are doing though is beating McLaren, which is what I want to a target the target that I want to achieve right at the start of the season. They're still yet to score so far, so yep, I would consider that a successful episode. Yes, a successful episode. Yes, we didn't we lost our um, points consecutive consecutive point streak, but I wasn't expected to score every round anyway. So uh, it's kind of a uh, different to have a uh, little bit of a difficult uh, time in terms of the race, but. Uh, Let's hope we can bounce back, though, in the next Grand Prix, which is Malaysia. But I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. If you did, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you all for round number 15, which is the Malaysian Grand Prix. So until then, see you later.